I hope you are enjoying the event. It was a long time for an in-person event, right? And I always have a dream to play on a Broadway show, so this is my day. <laughs> no, just kidding. I'm, I'm better on the soccer field, actually, than on stage. All right, so uh, let's start. I'm Olivier Poupany from Symphony, and uh, I'm here today to talk about how to develop uh, and automate workflows in seconds. About 2,000 years ago, uh, inventors in China took communications to the next level, crafting cloth sheets, sheets um, to record their drawing and writings. And one fact highlighted by the pandemic we are traversing, traversing these days is that our way of working still relies on uh, uh, activities based on this invention. And uh, work from home makes it uh, costly and, and painful. So, hyperautomation. Gartner defines hyperautomation as a business driven, disciplined approach that organizations use to rapidly identify, vet, and automate as many businesses and IT processes as possible. And no doubt that uh, this will drive our upcoming challenges. Um, workflows are at the heart of hyper automation. So let's see now what kind of workflows we are trying to automate here. And let's see a representation of a sample customer activity cycle divided in three phases, pre, during, and post. The pre phase is the period where the customer decides and prepare what to do. During is when things happen and execution takes place. And finally, the post is to keep it going and make sure the cycle can repeat. Each phase is decomposed into processes. And if we look at the pre-phase, we can have processes such as account opening, credit analysis, and sustainability. During and post will have their own ones too, right? And um, again, this is a very simplified example, and I'm sure that your uh, activity cycle is probably much more complex, but this is for our understanding here. If we zoom into the credit analysis, we can identify a certain number of workflows like information collection, cre um, information analysis, and credit approval. Zooming into one of them, such as credit approval, and we'll see that we have to first request an approver, review the analysis done from the previous workflow, evaluate the risk and take a decision on accept the acceptance or request a dedicated committee to take care of it and finally send back the final decision. This is the kind of workflow that we will explore today and see how to automate on Symfony. Automating a workflow on Symfony provides a lot of benefits that are listed here. And Symfony has not been designed and is, it is not in our intention to restrict the collaboration between humans, but help humans to work efficiently. So what is the solution? The solution is to develop bots. And bots can do everything a user can do and more. For example, you can format a nice message um, uh, with enhanced controls in, um, uh, from a bot. But the problem is that you have to code them and therefore imply developers. The hope is that low-code and no-code technologies will help to reduce the dependency of highly skilled personnel. Going toward no-code is a growl that every organization is trying to reach. But the reality is that all of the effort will be limited in terms of capabilities. These technologies can help until reaching a certain level of complexity and are more adapted for small and moderate scale projects. But this is already good, don't make me wrong. This is already a lot. So how do we go from there? Innovation and reduce time to market 
are the main motivators for financial institutions to engage in open source. So from this statement, we studied how to bring low code and open source together. As a result, I'm happy to introduce here uh, the Symfony Workflow Developer Kit. So here is a diagram to understand the positioning of the Workflow Developer Kit, or WDK. The goal is to be as close as possible of a composable business where you can literally assemble business components together. Programming languages and generic low-code or no-code platforms have their pros and cons, right? But when limits are reached, the low-code platforms have the tendency to open to pro-code. At Symfony, we first opened a platform through APIs and provided a bot developer kit to ease the work of developers. The workflow developer kit is the next step in our journey to help developers to build solutions. It can do almost as much as the bot developer kit can do, but with the potential to go toward our final objective. And we'll see that in a little bit. What is the WDK architecture? It ar its architecture sits on three layers. And the first one helps to describe workflows using a YAML-based language called Swaddle for Symfony Workflow Automation Definition Language. You can represent activities, trigger on events to manipulate a context. That's basically what a workflow needs. The second layer automatically translates the swaddle description into executable BPMN assets. And the third one executes the workflow thanks to an embedded open source workflow engine called Camunda. Not sure uh, if uh, you know this, um, this workflow engine, but it's pretty famous on the market today. So what is the impact on the development cycle to use a product like this? Compared to traditional approaches, the amount of effort and time to deploy is much lower. Just because we are describing and not developing anymore. And monitoring activities can help to understand how to refine the workflow to make it more efficient. Think about a step requiring a user to approve a request. That takes, in reality, three days. If you know it by monitoring activities, maybe you want to insert a step in your workflow to remind the approver to do the task after a certain period of inactivity. The future of the WDK is, of course, to go visual. Everyone is asking me this question. Can we do it visually? Um, this is something, of course, we are planning to do for the, for the near future and uh, to provide a way for non-technical users to describe their workflows still under the control of developers, which is quite important here. Enough of the theory. Let's see it in action now. So I'm going to switch to a presentation from the presentation mode. Let me... Just go back. All right, sorry. Tick All right, so on the on the left side, you have my uh, ID, my development of our environment, with an example of, um, of a Swaddle workflow. And on the right, you, um, is it your right? Yes. On the right, you have uh, Symfony, where um, I have here uh, two rooms and instant messages, one with my bot and one that is a dedicated room. 
So I'm going to start it to start the bot that includes the uh, WDK. It's uh, one line of, of um, sorry, to start the, the jar that contain everything. And it takes a little bit of, of time. And when it's going to tell me that everything is up. So it's a live demo. Sorry if there is some issues coming up. WDK sits on a regular Symfony bot, so there is uh, authentication of the bot with the key manager and uh, to get also a session key. Uh, and then the bot is able to use the API and the workflow will, of course, consume those APIs. All right, so it's there. My bot is called Asiavik, and um, I can, I can uh, talk to him. And this is my swaddle. Uh, so I took the example that uh, we saw in the presentation previously, which is the credit approval. And this activity has one, two, three, four, five activities. This workflow has five activities. What is the first one? The first one is to assign an ID to an approval request. So what we do is when a message is received, like slash credit approval with an amount and a currency, what we want is to define and, and get a random number and keep it for the entire context of the execution of this workflow. Um, of course, this could be a little bit different. We could call an API, and the API can give you this, um, this information and keep also the request, uh, store the request in a database. And the second activity here will be to request an approval. So um, we have here in a variable an approval room ID, and we're going to send this particular form with uh, the, what has been requested, uh, by who, the new request ID, and uh, the amount of the currency, and a button that says assign me. So everyone that will be inside that room will have the potential to um, request to be assigned to this ticket. And then we'll see what we're going to start this already and we'll continue after. So to trigger my workflow, I need to say content dash approval with, I'm going to say 1000 and the currency would be USD. By sending this to my bot, the workflow is going to be triggered and I should have soon a message in the credit approval admin room. It's a little bit slow, sorry. I hope. Should be up. That's the demo effect. Yeah, it's very slow. I don't know, Yongchun, you had some troubles before as well? What? Oh, the network is not. Oh, okay. Why I'm not on the Wi-Fi? No, I'm I'm on the Wi-Fi. All right, sorry about that. Um, so I can show you because I made a lot of demos about it. So that's what should come up. This uh, approval ID with. I'm gonna go like this. With this form, with assign me, you click on assign me, and then the bot will talk to you directly with you have been assigned to this uh, credit request. Please review the following information. Uh, so you get an attachment. And this is, let me go back to this one. This is the next activity that is called information analysis 
with request approval. When request approval is has been uh, has been done, so on form reply of the request approval, I'm going to send a message that will be inside um, in in this for this user ID, the one that initiated the event, and this is the content that will be sent. You have been assigned to the credit request. You can use any of the of the symphony. Uh, uh, special tags as well, like the hashtags, to um, create signals automatically on it. And, um, and then with an action button, like done. When it's done, we go to the next one. And the next one will be the risk evaluation, where we ask the user to approve, reject, or request, which is something that has, appears here. You approve, reject, or request. You submit, and then it goes to the approval admin room to say the status of the credits is approved with everything here. As a workflow developer, I didn't show you the final decision step, which is here. When the form is replied, the risk evaluation is replied. What do we do is we send everything like the status of the, of the request. If you need to update this workflow, so the Sweden language is recognized by your ID automatically because it's based on a, on a standard um, and public YAML-based uh, language. So here you can uh, add another activity. If you want an activity about messages, automatically you have the list of all the activities that you can do on Symfony. If, uh, if it is something about users, it's the same. If there's something about rooms, it's the same as well. Um, that's pretty much um, uh, everything. So if you reach a limit, if you want to do something that is very specific to what you can do, we also have uh, a way to expand that to custom activity and you can extend the, the Swaddle language by yourself by creating those custom activities. Of course, it is part of our open source program. So um, if I go back here and I go to this, the WDK is deployed, um, is um, sorry, available on the Finos repository in the Symfony ecosystem. And uh, we are, of course, open to pull requests if. Um, you're interested to extend, create custom activities that you want to be part of the standard YAML language, uh, Swaddle language, it's, uh, it's definitely possible here. Um, because at uh, Developer Relations, we help developers as well. What we um, provide is a course and a certification program that uh, comes also with our tools. And very soon you'll have uh, a dedicated course for the WDK uh, that you can uh, you can go from our developer center. Everything is free, and uh, our intention is here really to help you. And that's it. I'm sorry about the the demo, but uh, it seems that we have um, some technical some network issues here, so I unfortunately cannot run it right now. And I don't know if you went to our booth, but we did uh, all day some uh, demos. Um, it's very lightweight. It runs on a Raspberry Pi. And, uh, and you can, of course, um, uh, put it on your cloud if you want. But uh, it's um, definitely something that is uh, absolutely not heavy. Any question? Uh -huh. does, the, does the editor sort of uh, you know, manage the specific type of YAML that you've got with the, the copyright? Yeah, so maybe I went a little bit uh, too fast, but for example, if I want an activity to sorry, yeah, send a message. Yeah, you put an extra space on the Yeah, <laughs> that's true. But when you say, for example, you don't know if it's send or update, you know it's message something it points directly to the right list yep. if you put message. And then here you have like what are the parameters of send message. So you have, for example, 
uh, sorry, the ID. So I'm going to say ID. You have the also the documentation of the parameter, what it corresponds to. And um, the events. So on which event you want to trigger this. So on on. And then uh, when a message is received, when a message is suppressed, uh, when a user joins a room. So you have all the list of you can do. So you can start by learning the very basics. And um, the ID will help you to learn more and more and acquire the, uh, the proper language. How many of you are using? Yeah, I will come to you. How many of you already developed bots on Symfony? <laughs> How many of you are Symfony users? All right. Interesting. Yes, question. Yeah, no, uh, so actually the WDK is helping to create a bot. At the end, it's a bot, right? And a bot is two things. It's an application, but it's also an account. So the bot itself has an account on the Symfony network. So that's why you are talking to the bot like you would talk to uh, a regular user. And um, uh, it has some extra capabilities compared to a human, but... Uh, the authentication is made the same way. So, yeah, the, the, the um, WDK sits on top of our bot developer kit who takes care of it for, for you. So you have, uh, you have uh, just a description file to define where is the public key of your bot that will be recognized by the bot account that is in our system. And the authentication is made like this. Yeah, actually, uh, a bot, as I, I just said, is really like what a user can do, but in an automated way, right? But everything that a user can do, a bot can do, and more. And it always occurs in one room or another? In any room. It can be a one-one, and it can also be on behalf of someone else. There's something also possible. Like the bot can add for, for me if I'm not available, for instance. But I know for that kind of questions, I want an automatic reply. Uh, and the user will see as if I do it by myself. All right, any other question? I think it's the, the last session of the day. So um, because you, you were patient. I have a little gift for you. We have Symphony t-shirts. I don't know who didn't get his t-shirt yet, but who wants a t-shirt? Who didn't get a t-shirt? We have, our L are really large. I'm good at that. Large. <laughs> you have to help me, Yongshan, because large too? Still have some. Of course. <laughs> All right, please make sure to come and if you need more. Thank you.